What's up guys and welcome to Friday Flights. This is either going to solve all of my problems or create a whole bunch of new ones. A couple of weeks ago, I decided to start exploring the overclocking potentials on this box here. Just as a reminder, this has an MSI X299 Creation motherboard, an i7-7820X 8-core CPU, and a GTX 1080 for the Win graphics card. But I was met with some pretty significant cooling issues that I couldn't solve even by swapping out coolers. Now, originally I was setting out to make this an air-cooled system, and ideally that's still the system we're going to end up with. However, testing with the Scythe Fuma Revision B, it was able to handle at stock speeds just fine, but any kind of an overclock drew me into thermal throttling almost immediately. So I swapped the Fuma out for a Fractal Design Celsius S24, and I got, well, the same exact results, leading me to believe that the issue lies with the i7-7820X and not with my cooling solution. When I was swapping the coolers out and testing, I did inspect both the CPU and the cold plate on the cooler for any irregularities in how the thermal paste was spreading out. And while it all appeared to be spreading pretty evenly, it was just a hair thin in the center, meaning we might have a slightly high centered IHS. Another common problem with the 7820X is the terrible thermal interface material used between the IHS and the CPU die itself, and that's what we're going to attempt to address today. I picked up the Rocket 99 LGA 2066D lid tool on Amazon for about $35. So today we are going to attempt my very first D-Lid and see if we get anywhere. Like I said, I have never done this before, so come along for the journey and let's see if we can cool this thing down. So this is a pretty cool kit. Again, this is the Rocket 99 LGA 2066 D-Lid and Relid kit. It allows you to both take off the IHS and reapply it nice and square. Pretty self-explanatory to use. You've got your bottom plate right here, which actually your CPU drops into, and it's got the same gold triangle that your CPU drops into your motherboard with. So just align your CPU on top, drop your top plate in, just like that, and screw it in with the included hex screws. Once you've got it secured in place, go ahead and use the long Allen key that came with it, put it into the top thumb screw, and tighten until you hear a pretty sharp snapping sound. Didn't hear it there, but let's go ahead and try because that was an awful lot of pressure on that thing. Hey, we're free. Look at that. There we go. One D-lidded 7820X. And you can see most of the thermal paste came up with the IHS there, which means we weren't getting very good contact with the actual CPU die. That tells me there actually might be something to repasting the CPU. So the next step in this process is to remove all of this uh, black silicone that was holding the old IHS on. And to do that, I'm just using a plastic spudger. Now do be very, very careful when doing this. There are some very, very small capacitors on the side of the processor right here. You don't want to knock any of those off. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure most of it is removed. And then do the same thing for the IHS. And here, if you want to see how dry this thermal paste is, it literally just flakes up. There's, there's no substance to it whatsoever. That's pretty terrible that I don't need any rubbing alcohol or water or anything to clean that off, that it literally just flakes away. And same thing to the CPU, make sure all the thermal paste is gone, although Intel did a pretty good job of that themselves. I haven't touched this yet, and as you can see, it's already pretty darn shiny. There we go. One perfectly clean CPU die. Now that I have both the CPU die and the IHS completely cleaned off, uh, now it's time to reapply thermal paste. And it's going to be a little bit of shock to some that I'm not going to use liquid metal in this case. This is going to be a production machine, which means I don't want to have to do maintenance on it every so often. And while liquid metal has been tested to last up to a year, year and a half, it is recommended to swap out liquid metal on a CPU swap about every six months. And to me, it's just not worth it for the little bit of gains that you'd get over a good quality thermal paste. So that begs the question, what thermal paste am I using today? Well, I'm going old school. I'm using Arctic Silver 5. And getting everything reset onto the CPU should actually be a little bit more simple than the D-Lid process itself. Uh, to start with, you're gonna line up the CPU back in the socket using the triangle, just like you did before. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put on the thermal paste and I'm gonna spread it very, very thinly over the top of the CPU die. It's not gonna take much. And in fact, to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and use the little skewer that they included. 
Just like when repasting a GPU die, you wanna make sure to get every single surface covered because every bit of this is heat generating. Next, we're gonna reinstall the IHS, and for that, there's this handy little blue template. We're gonna snap this right over the top of our CPU, and that'll allow us to line up the IHS perfectly. If you're not sure of which direction to mount the IHS, there's a handy little cutout that's right here that goes opposite of the gold triangle. Then there's this little rocket ship part that we're actually going to screw into the two top corners of the IHS and that allows us to put pressure down directly on the center of the CPU IHS and die and get a nice solid contact with it. And that should be it. Now there is an optional step in this that I did skip and that is uh, siliconing back down the IHS to the CPU die. I chose not to do that because I may be taking this back apart for further testing and if I need to make further alterations to the CPU itself. Uh, but because of that, the IHS is not glued down to the CPU. And so you're gonna wanna be very careful when handling this as this can slide around, it can shift one way or the other. Uh, and you wanna be especially careful when remounting this into your CPU socket that your IHS is properly aligned. Welcome to day two of this test. Uh, as you can see, the system is all back together. I didn't bother filming me putting the CPU cooler on because, well, you've already seen that a couple of times. Anyway, let's go ahead and get the 4.3 gigahertz overclock fired up on this thing and see if the D-Lid yielded any noticeable improvements. Same test as last time. We're just gonna run Cinebench a couple of times with hardware info running in the background and see where our max temps get to. Now I know AVX is pretty much the worst case scenario for temperatures, but that's exactly what I want to test here. My goal is for this to end up being a render rig or even a new capture machine to use in the studio here, and it's got to perform pretty decently well uh, in order to take over that duty. So here's our idle temp sitting right around that eh, 37, 36 degrees Celsius. Pretty normal for where I'd expect it to be. No real difference from D-Lid versus non-D-Lid. And let's fire up the CPU test. There's those fans ramping up. 83, 85, not climbing nearly as quickly. Remember, at this point, we were already at like 104 Celsius, so 86. Did we really get an 18 degree delta? 86, 86, 87, but we're sitting right around 88 degrees Celsius. And there it's dropping down to 87. Yeah, we're we're looking pretty good. So from the looks of this, we managed to knock about 14 degrees Celsius off my max temp. I'll take those results. Yeah, 90 degrees, never went above it. Nice. Given these results, I don't think a lap of the CPU is going to be necessary. Uh, I was really worried about the center being a little bit high, but I'm not seeing any cores really spike above the others. Uh, as you can see, jumping over here, uh, our highest cores were 81, 79, 86, 90, 79, 82, 88. Pretty, pretty well distributed heat load uh, and all within about 11 degrees of each other, which is pretty normal. I don't think I can leave the performance there though at 4.3 gigahertz. I do want the system to be air cooled, but how far can we push out on an air cooler? Let's go ahead and let's go 47. Let's try 4.7 gigahertz and see where that gets us. See if we leave in post. Nice, and here we go. So 103, pretty much instantly. But hey, that means we gained almost 400 megahertz on our, uh, our overclocks here. And we're holding pretty steady at 4.7. 2035, new record. So we're not throttling at all, but we're definitely not happy. All right, I think I'm gonna call that a pretty good result. Uh, got us an extra 400 megahertz on the overclock. Obviously, I'm not gonna run it at 4.7 because this air cooler definitely won't handle that. But peaking at 90 degrees Celsius on the air cooler at 4.3 gigahertz, that's certainly an acceptable overclock for my use case. I think I'm gonna call that a pretty successful test. Just delitting, not using liquid metal or anything really exotic, just Arctic Silver 5, yielded about a 14 degree delta between our previous values at overclock at 4.3 gigahertz and our new values. So. I'm pretty happy with the performance here. That to me takes this machine at 4.3 gigahertz to borderline usable, but you definitely don't want to stress it too long to, I could totally rock this all day long with this Scythe Fuma Revision B. 
And I think that's as good a place as any to end it. You might be seeing some more videos with this machine coming up in the near future. Uh, I do plan on using this as a new streaming PC long term. So it'll actually be living down here on the floor right next to me. But uh, what do you guys think of the build overall? And do you think the results are adequate enough for what I'm going to be using it for? Or do you recommend any other changes? Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure to like this video if you liked it or dislike it if you didn't like it and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing and be sure to check out the Amazon affiliate links down in the video description if you feel like picking up any of the hardware that you've seen on this episode today. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this one and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys. That's a really big drink. Nope, can't do it. <laughs>